when the chart that's coming up is going to be, I hope it will be very, very, very helpful. Oh, yeah. It classifies all the time. Simple. Yeah. That is going to be so your this one is type three. Right there. And it, it is about immune complexes. The antibodies are going against the whole complex. Um, and then it, it is uh, the IgG or IgM antibody antigen immune complexes in the circulatory system. So um, when IgG or IgM attaches, then, then that, that makes complexes and then that can, that can cause a lot of damage and they can be really large and block vessels and such. So it can, it can be local in the, like the kidneys if you have a strep infection or something and there's a lot of the, the complex forms. Um, and then lupus, and this is a, a type 3 issue. It causes um, the immune complex and the and glomerulonephritis. You don't know all that word. <laughs> Nephritis is kidney and glomerulus. Okay, and then you can have like dust from moldy hay and farm workers, so that, that can be an alveolar inflammatory response. So these are just examples. You don't need to memorize that, but just it is a big old glob of mess that's that's mucking up the works. Is what it's doing. So, and um, if, if you have a systemic, you can have fever um, and uh, you know, have common, fever common, urticaria, big old wimps. Rash, arthralgias. What's arthralgias? Arthritis. Yeah. Mild. Yeah. Okay. What's uh, like like under your arms? Or like the lymph nodes are enlarged. Adenopathy. Adeno means gland. So if you can think about adeno gland, there's some something wrong with the gland. It's in large. Anyway, um, and they clump all up. Yeah, yeah. It just causes the clump, and, and they can be deposited in the blood vessel walls and outside of the blood vessels too, into the, in the tissues. And when that complement's activated again, we get. What process is going to happen? Inflammatory process. So, and that's going to mean the neutrophils are going to come on in and, and they're going to start eating, eating up um, what they can and trying to get the immune complexes digested. But, um, but then they, the enzymes are, are released in that whole process. And so that, that um, causes tissue damage. So, so what was supposed to be helping our body is, is becoming our enemy in that kind of kind of situation. We those um, enzymes and all are su supposed to get rid of your uh, your threat, but but the the process itself is, is causing the threat. And, and there's a it's a hyper form. So, um, anyway, that's that's the um, that's what our main exemplars. Uh, following this are going to be is is the RA and, and lupus. So here's the the, the picture here of the antigen, antigens um, invade the body. Here's some um, some antibodies um, hooking up antigen antibody complex that makes a, a whole different kind of. It doesn't just attach to it. It just it just becomes a big a big blob. Um, it deposits in the basement membranes and vessel walls and other body tissues and it activates a complement. Then we get all this inflammation going on, inflammatory chemical mediators, um, and the polymorphonuclear leukocytes. That is actually like neutrophils, right? <laughs> neutrophils are a lot easier to say than that. Followed by the release of lysozymes. So we know what the enzymes are going to be less the enzymes. And then the tissue damage can be extensive because of those um, uh, enzymes that are that are released. So um, serum sickness is, is something that um, it I, I guess I don't know if they have this in other other countries, but um, when they administer animal serum to humans, like like um, insulin used to be 
from, from where? This cows and pigs, what? I don't know if y'all even talked about that, but it used to be, you know, it's, it's, um, it's done, um, it's human now, it's, it's done genetically altered kind of thing. Um, but it, but the, it used to have to do uh, bovine or porcine insulin. Um, and uh, that was, I was just on the verge of them, them changing that though uh, to, to the human. But that, that would um, elicit the antibody production in some people. And so that would um, cause the local tissue damage and the complication and all that. And then um, you may have the edema in the hands and the face and the feet, um, swelling and upper respiratory tissues and, and um, respiratory issues for sure. So, um, but it's not asthma. It's a, it's a whole different thing. It's a whole different mechanism. Um, you can also have, uh, in some cases, penicillin and sulfur drugs can cause that. And I, that, that's really confusing to try, to try to separate those things. But sometimes it <coughs> make the <coughs> big complexes um, reacting to the, um, to the IgE and IG, IgM instead of, um, instead of the IgE. Good. All right. Now, the next one is type four, and it's it's a delay. You know, our very number one was the rapid, rapidly evolving situations. So this is delay. So this is cell membrane. This is about T cells. So we got T. The, the T cells are the cellular immunity. So. Um, it's an exaggerated interaction, like the contact dermatitis, the redness, and the fever. We, we did have that as an exemplar last semester. We didn't, um, that was a tissue integrity on that. And um, you, can have, you can have the blisters there, the vesicles, and you can have this with latex allergy. But if you had this particular cellular response over and over and over again, your body can develop the, the IgE type which can actually mm. cause you to have an anaphylaxis. It can't progress to that. That's why latex allergy mm. is so, so important to know about. Um, and it is, it is common in, um, in clients with certain, certain health conditions. Um, and you know, most places don't have the, the latex gloves anymore. Now, we still have some kits that we get that, that have latex gloves. Occasionally, we'll, we'll come across that. But um, what's one of the things that we have to be a little careful about with latex in the, in the setting that, that we would be in, in hospitals? What, what might we run into if somebody had a latex allergy? The, 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 the catheter, we have some latex catheter, so you're going to have to get it from, from the sense of process. Uh -huh. um, the first patient that did that was the OR. Uh huh. When she was in the OR, the nurse noticed that then. Oh man, this was she really, really irritated and oh, so that's that could but it, you know if somebody were on the verge of converting to the IgE kind of So and you saw it on the chart? Yeah, and I saw you that but I didn't know that was Oh, yeah, because they usually are a different color. Aren't they usually like red or something if they're not latex? So they're oh, they're clear. Yes, do Oh, the tourniquet? Because the, the tourniquets in those kits now that are blue are not latex, though, are they? But those there are some. That may still be around that are that are latex. We used to use those all the time. Yeah, that's what's that? I have a latex allergy, and I one of the nurses that worked on Sunday let me stick her. And after I did the tourniquet, so I don't know why I don't know. Um, but anyways, I my hands start itching really bad. I was like, what the heck? And I was like, watched them. I was like, well, was it? Um, was it? It was blue. Yeah. So the, those blue ones do have latex. Like, I, I don't know something that I touched that was my hands go crazy. And I did that at the very end of the shift. 
I guess it just just assumed that since a boy like the blood blue blue and all this stuff, that's not true, is it? Ah. Yeah, we'll have to have to pay attention to that man. Wow. Okay. So <clears throat> the T cells it does take a whole day to two whole days for the exposure to the antigen to, to show up. And um, it can be exaggerated between the, the normal mechanisms and and um, it, it can, can cause some local tissue destruction by the macrophages. And, and um, sometimes it's really just very mild, of course, but it's, if the macrophages start to hang in your numbers, then uh, you can have more <coughs> So um, this is one, the biggest example of this one um, is, well, dermatitis, of course, too, but, but um, the, the PPD test. Y'all had to do that, didn't you, for mm -hmm. getting into this program? Mm -hmm. Do that every year. Um, and uh, it can be a reaction to the contact dermatitis of 49. And um, it also can be the rejection of the graft condition. So um, if you have any, if, if you do have powdered latex gloves um, and you have cornstarch or something like that that, that were was inside, and they, those used to be the easiest gloves to slide on. They slid on so easily every time, and then they had that, that powder in it, but, but it, it was irritating because I'd have to, I had to get a, like a, a lavalier watch, is that what you call it? I had to get, get it, like a necklace watch because um, my, it would, that powder would get up under my watch and then, then I'd have a, a ring around there and so I, I must have been somewhat um, allergic to that too, so we got, got rid of that. Um, so it's a great thing. But it, it really, um, it really is dangerous because it can cause aerosols. That if people are allergic to it and they breathe it in, that can really be bad news. Gets into your lungs. Uh, about eight to thirteen percent of healthcare workers are allergic to latex. To latex. Hey, that statistic might have gone down because we don't handle it as much anymore. But but at one time it, it was fourteen percent at least. Um, and. Um, the people that have the certain health conditions, it's like it's on the slide, is people with spina bifida. And why would people with spina bifida have issues? They had a lot of early surgery. What? A lot of early surgery, a lot of staying. Yeah, they have a whole lot of care. And what, what, what about their bladders? They may have issues, and so catheters. If they have, if they have a lot of exposure to those latex catheters, then they, they end up getting getting latex allergies. Yep, you got it. And then children that have had three or more surgeries, um, about a third of them will have the allergies. Um, if you have mild dysplasia, like all the all of the blood cells are abnormalities, bladder extrophy, sometimes the bladder is not close, like it's like with spina bifida, the spinal column's not not close or the, the skin's not not over the spinal column. Um, and um, so um, latex condoms and use of latex gloves for intercourse. And then um, if you have an allergy to latex, you're more likely to be allergic to <laughs> this, I hope, I hope I'm not going to be allergic to any of this stuff, but kiwi fruit, bananas, and avocados are related to to the rubber trees, I guess. <laughs> so, do you, can you know any of that stuff? Um, it causes my mouth to itch. <gasps> That's what happened with that, that girl that had the reaction in last year at STEM. Did y'all hear about that? She she knew she was allergic to bananas, and, and she ate it anyway. She had a... She had a um, a little bit of smoothie, and she, they, they even told her that, that it had banana in it, and had it written on the, the table, too, where they were serving it, but she just says, I really want some of that, I haven't, I haven't had a banana in a long time, then do that, and then she starts itching her throat, and itching her, and so they, you know, call in the, the my ambulance, my mouth, and then, <laughs> my mouth will itch, my oh. ear canals will itch, and then, like, I can feel like I'm not in my yeah. throat, yeah, to me, that's like not that bad, but it's bad. Uh, <laughs> oh gosh. Well, I'm just starting to like have a kind of hot. I was really, 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 really
I don't want to get out of this route. But, oh, well, we can't, can't have everything we want. But So you want to do, the best thing to do is what? If you, if you know, yeah, you know, you have just don't, don't have it. Just have it handy if you can possibly help it. And if you know that you're, and if they tell you you got bananas in the smoothie, don't do it. <laughs> so she, she was pretty Immature. Immature. <laughs> she was immature. <laughs> I think I don't know. I think she was trying to trying to brag in front of her friends. I don't know. So, <clears throat> anyway, latex poison oak. <coughs> um, and if you do like you're out in the woods and you know that you're allergic to something and you're not sure that you if you touch something or not, it's a good idea to come in and and um, take your clothes off and put them directly in the in the washer and wash them and take a bath. And, Showers and wash it all off because it is a, it, it can be a, you know, a, the longer you're in contact with it, the, the worse the reaction could be. Okay, um, in, the, in your book, um, you've got information about latex allergies too, so in both versions of the book. So, so um, let's look at that because there's some concerns about that. There's some special safety issues for you all as well as your patients. Um, Okay, Benadryl is not helpful in this situation um, because um, histamine is not the main um, mediator of, of the inflammatory response and all that's not. So the Benadryl is what category? And I histamine. So I think histamine is not really the main the main villain, but that's not what we're going to need. So, um, and desensitization, desensitization does help, like your allergy shots. Like that, that does not help with this fight because IgE doesn't, doesn't cause it. And then the corticosteroids are the things that are most helpful when you use like steroid cream. So, so like Benadryl cream and all, you, it might help with it, but, it, but um, the cortisone will be better. Okay, here's our Here's our picture, our antigen presenting cell and then our T cell and, and the lymphokines and trichromatoclases and then the lysosomes, we end up with the enzymes released within the macrophage response and then the lysosomes um, can result in the local tissue damage, the itching and, and whatever. So, um, let's see here. Okay, I think that what she would what Mrs. Burkler had said, I think we just already said that. So I won't read it over again. Stimulatory reaction. So this is someone that could be the type two um, or a category of type two. It's appropriate stimulation of a normal cell surface receptor. And it, it has it, it makes us a continuous turned on state of the cell, like the Graves disease. If you've already gotten that, had that Hashimoto's thyroiditis and then brain disease um, follows that the form of hyperthyroidism. Um, the thyroid stimulating antibodies actually take the place of the thyroid stimulating hormone to work on the, the thyroid to, um, to bind to the cellular receptor without destroying the target of the thyroid cells. So the difference is that, that you don't that it turns them on and stimulates them by getting off of the, the, set, the receptors, but it, it doesn't destroy the cells. And that, that's why some people pull it out because it's not a destructive process. It's just a malfunction process. Does that make sense? To, it's just making a malfunction. And all, also, um, the myasthenia gravis is, um, is, is something that, that you, can, you can cause um, a, a type five because it, it actually, the, the thymus gland is, is full of the, the T cells. And so, um, they do, you know, get rid of the, the T cells, but you're not gonna have all of that muscle weakness that's, that's going on. Um, uh, and that, that's a whole nother um, ball of wax. But anyway, that's, a, that's another, another organ issue where it's, it's not actually destroying the tissue, it's just trying to turn it on to where it's, it's not malfunctioning. Overproducing. Um, okay. Oh, um, that that thing that that I, I put in the um, 
um, on the next page, I, I was looking at the home run to see, to see the type five, and there were several, you know, there, there's lots of, of um, references to it, but um, it, it actually was from Bratislava in 2013 that was talking about the not destroying the car itself and all that, so I thought I'd get a little bit of credit for what they, they did, but it was actually um, translated very well because it was quite nicely as far as um, understandable. Here we go. Tada, you wanted to see that one probably, and that's probably all you need to see. But, okay, <laughs> but the immediate, the number one is a quick rapid response, and it can take between two to thirty minutes, and that's like our hay fever, our asthma, our eczema, and our anaphylaxis. So that, and those are, it does not, it's not telling you about the IgE thing, so you can probably go back to that, but that's, that's the kind of in a nutshell. So cytotoxin, number two, you can remember that this has got to do with cells, blood cells, right? And it can be um, like blood and blood transfusion reactions. So blood cells, blood transfusion reactions, hemolytic disease in the newborn, autoimmune, hemolytic anemia, um, to destroy these cells. And the ITP is, is one of those too. So of course it would have this one of our, my examples. And then the immune complex number three. And you know, I, I don't really care if you know exactly how much time this is. I think if, if you can realize that this this one is delayed and that one's immediate, and this one's this one that, that um, deals with the cells, especially blood cells, and then the, the immune complex is our number three. Those, those are the the, um, the things that you need to remember. And um, the stimulated, like the Graves disease, the delayed is contact dermatitis and the tubercular, either tubercular. You know, what was she saying to work with lesions, meaning that, that, the, that the PPD reacted? I think that's what she's referring to there. But, but I, didn't, I didn't change her her sheet because I, I thought that was that was good. Does that does that help some to just just pull it pull it together? Yeah. Okay. Then you get it, you just do need to remember that number that number four is T cells, and that number one in, in particular is is the IBD. So. Okay. And this is for the wrap up. There's a lot of fun stuff. It's the beta 50 million more than you guys have some more hyper sensitivity. There's um, secondary immune responses might decrease the age, and the hypersensitivity reactions might, might keep happening. Um, incidence and intensity increases with the previous exposure. And a family member with an allergy increases the risk for. The child, but it might not be the same allergy. That's the thing that's really weird. Um, so, antibodies must be formed with the first exposure, primary response. And um, Christy was asking me this too that, like, if you have a, um, a, a medication or an antibiotic of some sort or, or whatever it is that, that you, um, especially medication, so if you don't remember taking penicillin in your life or something. Or you might have taken it when you were a child and you're, you don't remember that. You would have been exposed, but you might not have known that. And so everybody's thinking that that's your first exposure and, oh, well, there's no big deal. We don't really know if it's their first exposure for absolutely positive or if there's exposure to any component of it as well. So, so um, and if any, especially with antibiotics and when we're giving them antibiotics and we're at home and in the hospital, we want to be particularly um, watchful. Strange or anything. When uh, one of the, my coworkers at the oncology clinic started on Cipro one afternoon, I think she had gone to the doctor like at lunchtime or something, and she got a prescription and come back to, to finish up her work a little bit. And we had some patients um, staying a little bit late after five, and, and so she she was there, and, and she started getting all itchy and and. Uh, and the doctors were like, well, we were like, well, we give her some Benadryl and Sonic Medrol. And so we, we hooked up an IV and gave her Benadryl and Sonic Medrol. And her, her doctor was on the prescription for six or seven that day. So she um, she got over there and got um, checked out and got something else besides a Cipro because she didn't know she was allergic to Cipro. It just, it just happened all of a sudden. She didn't have the breathing problems. We didn't worry that she started having the So we went and gave her something. Okay. 
Um, so we want to minimize the exposure to the allergen. We've already established that, right? That's a that's a big deal. So people stay away from it if you can possibly do that. That's the very most sense and very helpful. So um, note the history of their exposure to, to things, but again, you may not be able to trust that history. So be be wary. Um, and if they have had a um, an um, allergic response, ask how did it happen, you know, what was the situation, and, and what kind of symptoms did they have. And then um, if you were in the hospital or they come in the emergency room, you want to withdraw that allergen immediately, um, and you want to maintain the airway and the cardiac output and all those kinds of things if you're you know, um, medical assistant. Um, and if there's, if there's recent, moderate, severe hypersensitivity, we're going to refer to a specialist. Um, and children with severe hypersensitivity reactions, you have to, to plan for school situations. And that's, that's kind of tricky, too, isn't it? That can mean you have to have a picky can or something. Huh? Okay. So lab test. White blood cells, we're going to look for which which type of white blood cell that might be eosinophil. kicking up. The, the, which one? Eosinophil. Yeah. The e, well, and you really want to look at the whole picture with, with those percentages, but the, when you look at those EOs, they're just supposed to be, what is it, up to four, I think. So it's a little tiny amount, though, so if you see like 15 eosinophils, that's just, that's just too much. So, okay. Um, type of frost factors, things that we do. RH reactions. Um, the RAS test is for what kind of um, allergies that you have and uh, antibodies against RBCs. That's what they do sometimes when you're doing the cross matches, that indirect Coombs test. And they do really qualify from all that too. But um, when you're doing your, your blood type across, you have to um, it, you have to have a, a bracelet put on after after they drop the blood, and it's only good for um, for 72 hours because your blood type's not going to change in 72 hours, is it? But what else is possible? Yeah, antibodies, because you don't know what you'll be exposed to within the next few several days. So, so yeah, the the um the antibodies can can uh, vary. So you, you have to have to keep watching that. Um, and, and there's some other assays and things that you can that you can do. Now, people that have had blood transfusion reactions um, usually do have a more thorough cross match. They'll do more different tests on those people, right? And, and that it may take a lot longer for them to do the cross match. Um, they may want to have it in an hour, but that's probably not realistic. You've got somebody that's had had major issues. So, all right, skin testing. So, we use that to determine the cause of the hypersensitivity reactions. And the, the allergens are selected according to what the, the history is, is saying um, and, and who, what the family is telling you. And um, you want to do the skin testing first to, uh, to try to avoid severe reactions. That's the, the trick here. extract of, of certain potential antigens on the skin and you put you prick it through the, the drop and then you can do patch tests. It's about a one inch patch soaked with allergens applied for skin, to the skin for 48 hours and a food allergy test. You can um, give it, have a food diary and eliminate certain things from your diet and then re reintroduce it if they don't tend, tend, tend to um, cause your problem. And when, when the culprit Rears its ugly head, then you then you'll kind of know what what that is. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna get you on the floor as well. But what other stuff have you had? Are there are there other um, other ones that are? Um, I've had blood work drawn um, to find allergies that I haven't necessarily had a reaction to, so to see if I have the antibodies built up. And there's a long list of antibodies that I have mm. built up. So, so I've never all had blood, that's all blood. Yeah, okay. but I've never had like reactions to pistachios and oats. Like I've never had an issue with them. Like, they say that I'm allergic to it, just because it's built up. Huh. But with, um, I remember when I had my last skin test, um, they tested for a whole panel of 
like seafood, that's my biggest um, uh, allergy. Seafood. Yeah, I have EpiPens that I carry everywhere for that one because cross contamination can be everywhere. Um, but my whole back turned into a humongous hive because they did um, probably four sets, um, four columns and the rows, so it was a huge panel. Um, and it was it turned into one whole hive. So that was an urtic urticaria. Yeah. <laughs> but it didn't didn't show you. Yeah. No. Nope. Uh, but I always put it. Oh girl. That's scary. Mm. Okay, thank you. I may I may get you to show us a if you can because I have oh, some yeah. I have some demos. I've got one. Yeah, I have but a the bag. demo ones will be better. Mm -hmm. so play with it. <laughs> okay. All right, so um, the TV's in yes and in for journal, but you can you can use your journal um, for for antigens that when you can use a larger dose um, to see if that's that's really the, the one that's going to um, the one that's bothering you the most or whatever. And so um, it can be in the, the forearm or the then between your, your shoulder blades and um, it, it does increase the risk for, for reaction. And the biggest thing on this next page is that you need to have what a rent, what's available if you're going to be given tests like that and somebody might just fall out on you. Yeah, you got to have um, what you, yeah, you pin or, um, or, I, or even just a... When I tried to do the um, immunotherapy shots, um, they didn't really work for me, but I always have to show up with a thing of Benadryl and an EpiPen, otherwise they, they won't give it to you. But oh, I so always, they have it, so you have it with you, and they know that you have it. And then so you have you, to stay for at least 30 minutes after you get your shots, and they can monitor you. Yeah. yeah. They just made me have hives to be really uncomfortable, and like it caused, um, like my sinuses to always be inflamed and everything, just because it was systemic. So it wasn't anything yeah. um, that we could breathe in, though. Thank <laughs> goodness. Got our airway to think about how we need to do it. So, um, even with tiny, tiny quick tests, that can be very, very, very little sometimes, and then that can be, that can be a real, real problem as well. So, let's This is sort of an older video, but it's 